genius detective Sherlock Holmes has long gone beyond the books of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. People make movies, TV series, comics and of course video games about him. Ukrainian studio Frogwares excelled in this field, which since 2002 has released more than 10 projects. But this year Death have released their new creation, which was both a remake of their 2007 game and a sequel of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Critics have met the game quite warmly, but for me this project has caused conflicting feelings. In this video we will talk about what the Frogwares did well and what not, and finally answer the question, is Sherlock Holmes The Awakening worth playing? The game plot starts very harmlessly. To be exact, Sherlock and John Watson decide to investigate the disappearance of one Lord's servant and also Watson's client. But as you investigate, you realize that the servant was not the first to go missing under mysterious circumstances. Afterwards, you have to visit several countries and come face to face with mysterious Cthulhu cult, whose members are trying to perform a ritual to summon their Dark Lord. The story in the game is quite interesting and keeps you in suspense till the end. You want to understand who is behind all the kidnappings and whether there is truth in the cultist's words. And as you go through the game, you see that Holmes' mind gradually gives way and he gets deeper and deeper into abyss of madness, while he tries to deny all the mystical events, writing them off as hallucinations and drugs. Considering that Conan Doyle himself was fond of the occult and was a member of major society the Golden Dawn, it is possible to imagine that such a story would have appeared in one of his books. By the way, this wouldn't even be the first time that elements of mysticism and occult accept into the author's detective stories, so one can only compliment the Frogwares writers. However, the story has a bit of a problem, and that is the ending. If you don't want spoilers, you can use time code in the description and on the screen. The climax of the whole story seems rather rushed, there is no feeling that the all pieces of a puzzle have come together. You can clearly see that the developers were in a hurry for a finale and so everything happens rather quickly, which of course leaves a bad aftertaste. And as such there is no confrontation between Sherlock and the head of a cult. We just get into a discussion and after Watson breaks all the lanterns responsible for controlling the minds for prisoners, the cult leader jumps off a lighthouse. The funny thing is that if you choose the wrong answer in the dialogue with him, he will also jump, which is presented as a bad outcome. I also didn't understand the scene that followed. Sherlock says he has to find out if Ktolhu is real or if it was a fragment of crazy people imagination after all. The camera zooms in on a huge wave that is about to engulf the lighthouse. The tension builds and you think something terrifying is about to happen, but absolutely nothing happens which causes this reaction. In short, after the finale, I didn't feel any satisfaction. On the contrary, I was sad because the rather interesting plot led us to a rather bland ending. As for our characters in our narrative, it was a bit ambiguous. I liked Sherlock and as said earlier, his plunge into madness is quite curious to watch. Dr. John Watson on the whole is not bad either. He tries to support his friend in everything and is always willing to offer his help as a doctor. But the rest of the characters don't evoke any emotion. For most part they are cardboard characters without any prominent personality or goals. We appear, then disappear and instantly forget about them as if they never existed. The main antagonists don't evoke any fear or anything like that, they're just typical villains. I know it's probably unfair to compare a small studio and a big publisher, but think back to Far Cry 5. Yes, the game had flaws, but the main cultists there were quite cool and charismatic. Joseph Seed caused some discomfort with his appearances, and in the end, as a character, he was remembered by people. This cannot be said about the cultists from Sherlock, because I'm sure that a month later most of the players won't even remember the name of a cult leader, and that's a bad indicator. In Chapter 1 there wasn't a common enemy, but the criminals appearing as they go through the game had their motives and personalities. But what Frogwares did really well was the atmosphere. Believe me, you can feel it in almost every location, whether it's the streets of London or a mysterious swamp. Often you get uncomfortable, that's what I consider a success. Perhaps the mental hospital in the mountains of Switzerland was the one I remember the most, for the scenes there were fantastic. The whole thing reminded me of some good thrillers in the style of a cure for wellness or Shutter Island. 
The more I explored the hospital and everything that goes on there, the higher the degree of tension rose, and because of that, I got some truly unforgettable emotions. Unfortunately, the main problem of a game, namely the gameplay, slightly damaged all these emotions. The thing is that the gameplay is very simple, and in this regard, the game is similar to another Ubisoft project, to be more exact, to the first Assassin's Creed. You get to a location and either wander around, looking for something, or investigate the place to figure out what to do next. And so this gameplay cycle bores you pretty quickly, and by the end of the game, you start praying that they don't let you investigate another location. To be fair, a couple of times in the game you still get into interesting situations, but it's not enough. I understand that you have a game about detective and investigations are an integral part, but you have to mix it up sometimes. And there are segments that could have been very cool, but in the end all the action happens during the cutscenes. For example, when we go to the swamp, our duo gets a rifle just in case. Guess how many times we use it? That's right, only two times. Once to shoot the corpses and distract the alligators, and once in a cutscene. That's where the action ends. Time to get back to investigations. Luckily, if you're tired of investigating as Sherlock, you can always do an investigation as Watson. So rejoice in that variety. The only good thing is that John is different from Holmes in character, so they can react differently on some things. And if it is necessary, you can always analyze the corpse and understand what happened. In general, the gameplay is very bland and repetitive, so if you don't like constant puzzles in the investigation system, you may want to just check out the cutscenes from The Awakening. And finally, let's discuss the optimization, because it has become a painful topic for a lot of games lately. And here I have to say that the developers have done a good job, because the game has a stable FPS and bugs even if they roar, they are completely unnoticeable. Of course you can pick on the animation of the faces, because they sometimes look strange, but overall I was pleased with the visual and technical side of the game. Frogwares don't force you to wait for patches, unlike our small indie studios. Sherlock Holmes The Awakening gives me very conflicting feelings. On one hand, it is a game with pretty interesting story and boring gameplay, but on the other hand, it was developed in a year, under not the most comfortable conditions. If you're a big fan of Sherlock Holmes and Frogwares, you will probably like this game, but if not, you're likely to come away disappointed. You have to remember that the game is supposed to entertain the player first and foremost, and with that, The Awakening doesn't exactly do the job. However, considering all the circumstances and the fact that the story can be enjoyable, the game gets a 5 out of 10 from me. Now that's it for today. If you dear friends like this video, then do not forget to put your royal likes and subscribe so that in the future not to miss similar content. Good luck and see you soon!